right, we're rolling. Here we are, episode nine of Steve Says. We are back. We missed Tuesday because we got banned on Facebook for putting having music in the background during our workout Saturday night. I guess if there's certain music playing in the background, then they ban you, then you can't post any videos or do any live videos. You, we couldn't even post highlight videos of other stuff. Once you play music, they ban you from all video posting. So now we're back on here. Episode number nine of Steve Says. Let me get a sip of my herb life because you know I need to always have this shit. Otherwise, I'll be moving in slow motion. You know, I need to move. I need some energy. I need to move fast. So we're going to start with the quote. The quote that I posted today, a lot of people liked it. So I'm just going to read that back really quick. It's the only thing standing between you and your goal is the bullshit story you keep telling yourself why you can't achieve it. And that was Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street. That kind of ties into a lot of the the stuff we're going to talk about today. We're going to go over, we're going to kind of do a recap of the 24-hour workout we did this weekend, 24 hours straight through, we're going to talk about the Game Changer program that's coming up in a couple weeks. We're going to talk about the upcoming weight loss challenge that's coming up. And then I'm going to answer a couple of questions from some of the members. And we're going to talk about the charity and the fundraiser that we, that we raised all that money for. So basically, you know, the 24-hour workout, if you, re- if you remember this past Friday night, we had a 24-hour fundraiser boot camp and boxing workout. Is for, we did it for autism. Bad connection. I don't know why. It shouldn't be a bad connection. Anyway. I don't know how I'm talking to myself, but I'm, re- I'm replying to myself. Anyway, what a, what a crazy workout. It was a 24-hour boot camp boxing workout for autism. It started at midnight Friday night, all the way till midnight Saturday night. What a ridiculous fucking day. It was end night, all day, end night, nonstop training. You guys are all fucking awesome. There was not a single minute, not even a single second, that, that there wasn't at least a few people in here training for, for the entire 24 hours. That went 24 hours straight, there was someone here training. Of course, I was here the entire time. At times, there were as many as 30 or 40 30 or 40 people in here together killing it all for a good cause. So I want to personally thank every one of you that came out and supported us. We had a goal of raising $5,000 and I set this up just a few days before we did it. This is on Friday. I set this whole event up a couple of days before. It just came to my mind one day when I was in my cave and I just came up with it and bam, just put it out there. I had no idea what, how, what, how it was going to work, what was going to go on, but I don't care. I just put it out there and I'll figure it out. It's called jumping out of the plane and building the parachute on the way down. That's kind of how we do things. That's how we come up with some of our best stuff sometimes. Because I just have faith that we're always going to make it happen. And we will always make it happen like we did make it happen. So I just want to thank everyone that came out for that. So like I said, we had a goal of $5,000. Everyone was telling me I was crazy. You're just never going to get $5,000. That's way too much money for such a short amount of time. You didn't put any planning into this. You didn't promote this thing at all. You didn't tell anyone about it. It's not going to happen. It'll never be a hit. It'll never happen. It, there's no way you can make $5,000 in those 24 hours. Basically, is what tons of people were telling me just yapping in my ears all the time. You know, everyone always has that best advice for you, right? Everyone always does tell you how to get you know, what you should be doing when they don't even have their shit together. Their shit's a fucking mess and they're going to sit there and try to tell you how you need to be doing your shit. So I don't really let that affect me. I just do what I'm going to do. I, you know, I'll set, I'll set this stuff up and I'll figure it out as I go. And you know what? I'm always going to make it happen no matter what. So I'm not sure if they know who they were speaking to, but whatever. I, I love people doubting me and counting me out. That's, that's been the, the story my whole fucking life. It's always been me against the world. When I, when I was trying to get into the Marine Corps, I just go out to find stories all the time. My head just twirls and spins all day. So just stay with me. So when I was going trying to get into the Marine Corps, it took me months to get into Marine Corps. Like I think like eight, nine months just to be able to sign the paper to join up when I first went to the recruiter. I went to the recruiter literally straight from a jail cell, but that's besides the point. That's for another day. So it took months and waivers and judges and background checks and interviews due to my questionable past or whatever you want to call it. The police in the town where I grew up, they told the recruiters and the investigators that, that I'll never make it in the Marine Corps, that, that I'm going to be shipped back in two weeks and they were going to be waiting for me with their handcuffs when I got back. You know, what a bunch, what a bunch of fucking dickheads. Sure, sure, I was a nightmare out there on the street, but I was trying to turn my life around, so there was just no need for that douchebaggery, you know? Try to help someone out that's, that's looking for help and looking to be helped at the time. Finally, when I was ready to turn the corner, you know, don't try to ruin my entire life. You know, I screwed up enough when I was younger, so they tried to really hold me back. They tried to make me not get into the Marine Corps. But anyway, the day of, the day of graduation, I was meritoriously promoted to the next rank, graduating boot camp at the top of the platoon. Commanding officer, pinned the eagle open anchor, on my chest, and he told me to take that emblem back to New York and tell those that are, were trying to sabotage me to shove this up their ass. You gotta love the United States Marine Corps. That's just how they do business. That was like the commanding officer, day of graduation, in front of thousands of people, sitting there watching the graduation, all the friends and family members, and this is the parting words he had to tell me, is take this emblem, go back to those people that were trying to hold you back and trying to sabotage you from coming here and tell them to shove this up their fucking ass. That's what I was told by the leading officer, the the commanding officer of the base in Paris Island, South Carolina. 
That's, I guess, just the way the Marine Corps does it. Anyway, back to the fundraiser, because I just go off on these tangents all the time. It happens all day in my brain. You just have to hear this for like 20, 30, or 60, or however the fuck long this, this, this video takes. You just have to hear it for that long. I have to hear this stuff going on all day in my head. But that's also why I'm able to create a 24-hour workout in like a couple of minutes and figure it out and just make that shit happen. Anyway, we ended up raising over $5,000 for the charity. We had almost 100 different people that donated. There were a ton of more people that came in, were bringing us food and drinks and adult beverages and all kinds of stuff and gifts and donations and prizes and all kinds of stuff for those of us that were here for the entire 24 hours. So there was just loads of food and drinks just nonstop. And you know, this, this event showed me that there's still a lot of good fucking people in the world. All you hear on the news is about crime and murder and drama and, and robberies and all that other negative bullshit. Some old lady that was raped in broad daylight and some kid punched someone in the back of the head for a, a stupid fucking game. It's exactly why I stopped watching the news. You know, that's exactly why. It's just all negative bullshit. You should stop watching it. News is garbage. You know, I had people donate through our, through our website. We had the, we just, I made a link. I made a website in like a half hour, threw it up on there that night, like three in the morning, just put it up there. We had people donate on the website that I've never met. There were even a couple of people who just walked in and donated generous amounts of money and just walked out. They had people I've never met. I have no clue who the fuck they were and they didn't leave any contact information. So I want to thank those mystery friends of ours also for those donations. It's shit like, it's shit like that that's news to me. That's, that's stuff, this stuff I'm telling you about right now, that's news. This random person that comes into my gym at, at fucking one in the morning and drops off a check for $75, another person a check for $150 that I've never met, they've never met me, I'm not, I don't recognize them, don't think I'm friends with them on Facebook, have no clue where they came from, they just come in, drop off a check, and they thank me for doing what I'm doing, and they walk out. That's news, that's fucking news, not the dumb shit you see on TV and you hear on the radio. That shit ain't news, that's fucking garbage. That's, that's on the TV and radio, that's like propaganda and hate, and that's their agenda, with the puke just pouring out of their fucking pie holes 24 hours a day. Anyway, speaking of 24 hours, we were here the entire 24 hours. What's Maureen got to say? There's still good people in the world. Yes, there's good people in the world, and it just so happens they all come into Peak Physique. That's the kind of people that we attract here. That's the kind of people that are in our family here. There are still good people in the world, and that's, our, that's my mission is to seek those people out there, out there and make them part of my army because I need an army of good people for when this invasion comes. I don't want a bunch of uh, douchebags that, that are in the, in the news for my army and the invasion. So anyway, that 24 hours, it was me, the Russian, Tyson, little, the little girl, we were all here the entire 24 hours. I woke up that Friday morning at 0345, that's 345 a.m. for you civilians, to train, the, I trained the 5 a.m. boot boxing class and the 6 a.m. Uh, boot camp class that Friday morning. Then we had the, this event started Friday at midnight, so obviously I just stayed straight up. I'm not gonna sleep in the middle of the day. You know, I'm a grown man. I don't need a nap. So I stayed up straight through till midnight and then stayed up another straight 24 hours for the workout. Pretty much I was out here doing the entire workout most of the time. Had some help here and there when I was helping other people with other things or shooting videos or whatever. But, you know, so I was almost 48 hours that I, was, that I was up here doing this, bringing the motherfucking fire every second of every second. Also wanted to thank uh, Cesar Munoz of Total DJs. He provided the music for the entire 24 hours. We had the music pumping, cranking, 24 hours straight. It's crazy. I still don't have my hearing, but whatever. It's worth it. We use, we use them for all of our events that we've ever had. All the parties we have for the gym is always Total DJs. Caesar always does it. Even if I'll come up with something last minute, Caesar will put it together. He will make that shit happen. They are awesome over there. You need DJs in Rockland County? That is the choice to go to. Go to Caesar. He's awesome. Uh, they always go above and beyond the call of duty to make, make shit happen for us. Also, our member who is a longtime client, uh, Tertsi Horowitz, she's a longtime client of ours that's also going through our, our personal trainer internship program now for a few months. She's been going through the program. She stayed here the entire fucking 24 hours. Now I expected myself just because I'm just a freak and that's just what I do and it, that's nothing to me. But for someone else to be able to do that, she was here every second of the 24 hours. And on top of that, she was assisting training and helping people out and, and helping correct people, taking care of people the whole 24 fucking hours. She's, she's, a, she's a machine. She's not human. She's a true fucking peak freak to the bone. She was even taking over it sometimes that I just got to sit there and just, I got to assist her in the training. She just took that shit over. I was like, run with it, go with it. She was awesome, kicking ass in there. What do we got going on? Caesar is the music man. Yes, he's the fucking music man. Caesar killed it. Yeah, at the end, that old school stuff. We put some old school up. That's the stuff that got us banned. Rosa, I told Caesar, I said, you have any old school hip hop? It's pretty sad that I, the music I'm telling him to play from my generation is now considered old school. That's bullshit. Whatever's playing now, the, the hip hop or the crap, you, I don't even want to call it, I don't even know what that shit is called that's playing now. 
that little, little, little Wayne or whatever the fuck that is, that shit is not music. That shit, I don't know, that's not old school, that's not new school, that's fucking just stupid shit. I don't know how people get paid for that stuff, but that's besides the point. So I told Caesar to put on some old school hip hop, which means mine, like the 90s. How the fuck is 90s old school? Whatever, I guess I'm fucking older. I guess you can see in the beard, I need to shave. But anyway, so he puts it on. I checked, I was on live, I did a Facebook live, if you were watching. I checked in on a live video every hour of the 24 hours. I at least tried to. I don't know if I missed an hour, but I did a Facebook Live and did a video every single hour of the 24 hours. And the music was playing. Caesar's music was playing the entire time. So there was always music in the background of the live. We get to the final hour. I'm doing a straight live straight through the last, I think, like 45 minutes or something like that to finish it off for the final countdown, going crazy. And what happens? Facebook sends me this thing, it flashes on the screen. It says, you have licensed music in the background, you're gonna be cut off, do you still wanna kill, continue with this stream or whatever that you're saying you have rights to this music? If it's not the main purpose of your video or some shit. So the music wasn't the main purpose of the video. The main purpose of the video was fucking raising money for autism and the workout we were doing and these savages that were here for all these hours with me. That was the main purpose, so I clicked continue. Motherfuckers cut me out, they deleted that last video so we lost all the footage of that final hour and then I think Caesar ended up playing some Rocky music at the end after the old school hip hop stuff. So we lost all that, all that footage we lost once we got banned. So 24 hours straight through, I checked in every single hour with that music playing in the background. And these fuckers on Facebook decided to cut it off the last hour. So we lost the last bit of footage. I'm not, still trying to contact them. They haven't got back to me if there's somewhere I can access that because I still want it just for myself to have, whatever. So anyway, I was saying about Caesar did the DJing 24 hours a day. Turtsy did the helping of, she was here every second of the 24 hours, helping out with the clients, just training like a maniac. We were in the last, the 24th hour, the final hour of training. So she jumps back in. We we finish with like 45 minutes of boxing at the end. She puts on her boxing gloves and she's been here now for 23 straight hours. And she starts whacking the bag, chopping it with her leg like she's chopping down a fucking tree. It was crazy. It wasn't human. She's going crazy. She was like, it was like she was fresh. 24 hours in here. And she was fresh, just smashing the fucking bag. It was crazy. So, uh, like I said, it was straight through. We had about 90 minutes. When we had about 90 minutes left, we were still short of $5,000. Probably like maybe $700 short now that I I backtracked all the money that came in. At the time, I had no clue where we were. I was trying to check here and there, but it was hard to tell. So, there was about 90 minutes left. Uh, Kendrick comes in, one of our clients. And he already was in early in the day, did a workout, already donated. He came in and gives me $400. Says... I saw you guys were still a little short. I put some posts up on Facebook. I got people to sponsor me and to put pledges for a certain amount of money, 25 cents per push up, 10 cents per push up that I could do in his last 90 minutes. And I watched him do it. This fucker sat right here in the cage in between the heavy bags and he did 500 push ups. Crazy shit. And he got us over the top and we ended up getting, I forgot what the total number was that I told instead of the uh, donation, like $5,183 or something like that. It may be a little different. We're going to get into that in a second. And the donations and the charity and all that. We're going to talk about that. So people were asking me, aren't you tired? When are you going to take a nap? A fucking nap? Like I said, I'm a grown-up. I'm a man. A nap? I haven't taken a nap. I don't know if I took a nap when I was a baby. I probably take a nap. I was probably just crawling around, banging off walls and shit. Probably like I'm doing right now. But anyway, are you kidding? This event was one of the most amazing things I've ever been a part of. 24 hours straight through here with all my freaks. Yes, 5,183. I think a little bit came in after that. So it might even be more than that. I got a couple checks after that. So it's even more than 5,183 for the charity. So yeah, so this, this event was crazy. It was off the wall, it was amazing. You know, I didn't wanna miss a minute of it. I wasn't taking a nap, I wasn't taking a break, I wasn't taking a rest, I didn't wanna miss anything. I'll rest when I'm fucking dead. And even then, probably, probably when I'm dead, I'll, I'll still be pacing back and forth in hell, just regrouping, planning my next move in the battle, still, still planning for the fucking invasion, even in the afterlife, until the devil has had enough of my shit and kicks me the fuck out of hell. Then, then I'll run over that motherfucker and I'll take over his place and, and then whatever. He'll, he'll have no choice but to kick me out. Anyway, how can I get tired when there was nonstop action going on in this gym? Literally, 24 hours. There was not a second that someone wasn't training in here for 24 hours. And that was my goal the whole time. And I knew it was going to happen because, you know, if, if there was ever a point where there was no one training, I was just going to do it myself. So luckily, there was no gap of like five or six hours that I just had to sit here and train by myself. Luckily, you guys are just as much of freaks as me, and you're all coming in here working out. What's Rosa got to say? Fucking amazing. Best party I've ever been to. Yes. We got the party. With you. We got the other party. We, you've been to like three parties already. Every party is the best party. We keep throwing parties. We have as many parties here as we do training. It's crazy. Fuck it. Let's have another party this weekend. Let's do it. Let's just get fucking wasted on energy, right? 
So how can I get tired when, when there's people coming in? There's no way I'm going to get tired. I'm not going to get tired. I was in the last hour. I had no voice left. It didn't matter. It was going, it was going full speed. We were going to the end. We were going to go out strong. We were going to finish this thing the way we, it was meant to be finished. You know, this, this, that, that party, this whole event, that is my why. That is, that is my why. With people coming in, energy, working out, people pouring in for workouts, pouring donations in, we appreciate that. And that, like I said, that is my why. This is why I work so hard and I get up so early every, every morning. So I could be able to pull off such ridiculous projects like this one. I was made for this shit. This is, this is what the Marine Corps trained me for. This is what they taught me for. This is what they put inside of me. It's just, it's nothing to me. This is what I do. This is what I'm, I'm built that way. So I could, I could do this every weekend if I had to. We are built for battle. I would go into fucking battle for every single one of you that showed up throughout that 24 hours. Even those mysterious people that came in to drop all those checks. I don't even know who the fuck you are. I will still go into battle for you. Those are the people. Those are my why. This is why I do what I do. You know, that's, that's what Peak Physique is all about. I don't even want to call this a gym over here because in these four walls is much more than that. Inside here is an environment, a family, an experience, a fucking culture. We exist, we exist for you, for you to have a place to come when you just don't feel right at, at any other place, don't fit in anywhere else, not accepted anywhere else because you're considered to be a freak or whatever. Come join us. What the fuck? We're, well, we're all freaks here. So, you know, come join the few and the proud, the, the peak freaks over here. We'll take you in and we'll treat you like family. The most crowded of time of that 24 hours was like 2 30 3 a.m it was like 30 40 people in here working out training i don't know dancing banking banging off walls drinking drinking water and protein shakes of course yes maureen kill 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 maureen is a savage freaking savage so here, here at peak it's much like the marines were for me you know when when i was not welcome anywhere not even in jail i wasn't welcome this this is your oasis here this is your this is your freaking paradise here here you are freaking Marines. You are autism when you come here. You are Harris, my nephew. Here you will fit in. You'll be accepted for all your, all your fucked up in this. You know? Damn, it doesn't take me much to get sidetracked. I don't even remember what we were talking about. I just start talking and going and going. Anyway, at times, like this workout turned into an all out party. It was like, like I said, two or three a.m. There was like 30 people in here, just peak freak fucking craziness. And you know, only the way that we could do it here. Our guest of honor, my nephew Harris, he, made, he was able to make it Saturday afternoon, so I got a chance to work out with him and I got a chance to train him. He had a blast. And, the, and you know, with the DJ playing the music, all the flashing lights, the crazy ass workouts going around him, all the craziness and noise and energy and fun and excitement, you know, to see him happy and free and just fucking letting loose and realizing it was okay and it was normal and it was accepted and it was even encouraged for him to just be himself and be just wild and crazy and, and then fucking free. You know, that, that was awesome to see. That was awesome to be a part of. That was like the highlight of the entire 24 hours right there. What do we got here? Normal people rarely change the world. Yes, there are none of those here. So, you know, by seeing him and the way he was in this event, like just being able to kind of interact socially with us and just train with us, you know, my nephew Harris, who is autistic, that's kind of why we did this whole thing. You know, this led me to the next thing I want to talk about is the no donations that you all made for the autism fundraiser, you know, for the charities. So we obviously we committed... Uh, to donating a portion to the ARC of Rockland, the prime time for kids, upper level in New City. This, it's a full-time kid uh, school for kids with autism, ages 8 to 21. They, use, they have small class, like eight kids per class. But like I said, after seeing Harris so happy and free, I want to see that in more of these kids, even if the kids from the school or wherever the kids from this area, we'll get them from wherever we have to get them from. So I'm in the process of starting to organize a social event, a social event for these local kids from that school or from wherever. And again, I'm sure people are going to tell me that this can't be done, whatever, it can't happen, but I'm just going to do it. I don't care. Who's going to stop me? So I want to get those kids, let, let them get dressed up, get them all nice, nice, fancy little outfits, whatever, suits or whatever, or whatever. I don't even know. They don't have to get dressed up. Whatever they want to, whatever they want to wear. I don't really care. I'm going to rent a stretch party limo, a Hummer limo. I'm going to go pick them up one by one at their houses with their staff or teachers or parents or, or however that whole process works. I don't even know how it works, but you know what? I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to make that shit happen. And I'm going to take them out for a fun, crazy day. I don't know where we're going to go. I'm going to take them somewhere to some kind of event. Or maybe like bowl, we're going to rent out the bowling alley in, in, the, in the mall or something. And we're going to take the limo over there. I don't know where we're going to go. We're going to figure it out. You know, I was, that's what I was thinking. If you have, I'm open to suggestions about maybe how that whole day should go. But I'm looking to set this up in the next, you know, several weeks. Maybe set this up by June or something. So I've already started working on it a little bit. Obviously, I could use some help from... You guys out there, if you have any ideas of what, what we should do, but I'm going to put this, these donations that came in, I don't want this just to go to, to where someone's going to just, they're just going to get little juicy boxes of fucking high C with some artificial colors and all some bullshit and some Cheetos that they're going to have for snacks. 
I want this to go to something like, I want to see that, that magic that I saw in Harris that day at the party. That's what I want to see the, all these kids doing. And I'm going to go pick them up one by one in a limo and we're going to take them somewhere and we're going to do some crazy shit with them and they're going to have some fun and just interact and have a social event and it's going to be awesome. That tank top, is that new? No, I had this for years. But we got all kinds, we have a whole new clothing line coming in. Juan, a whole new clothing line. We're going to have tank tops, uh, men's tight t-shirts, long sleeves, jackets, shorts, everything is coming in. Similar to those women's ones that you just saw. Uh, the women's pants we have. There's a whole women's line coming, men's line coming. They even have some thongs for you if you fucking want them. Anyway, so I'm sure several, again, several people are going to tell me, I can't pull that off. How are you going to do that? How are you going to make that happen? Whatever with these kids and this limo and, and getting them dressed up and getting them out somewhere. How am I going to happen? I don't know. I'm just going to do it. That's just what I do. I just do the shit. I just make it happen. I'm going to make it happen. That's how I'm going to make it happen. It's just going to, it's just going to, it's just going to work. I know it will. And I'm going to make that, make sure of that. So I think it's going to be an awesome way to let these kids out, let them have some fun, some social interaction, just let them loose, let them be themselves, get dressed up, let them be the fucking superstars that they are and let them party their asses off. You know, much like I saw Harris doing that during that 24 hour workout. Uh, anyone, anyone that wants to help out with this, let me know. Uh, I could definitely probably use some help with some ideas of what we're going to do with them. And probably, you know, we'll need some help with the teachers from the school that we're donating to or the staff, or however it works, we'll figure that all out. That's, that's not going to be a problem. So we have a raffle winner for, that we did during the 24 hour. Every hour you were here during the workout, you got a raffle ticket for each hour. So we're going to pull the raffle, raffle tickets for that today. It was supposed to be on Tuesday, and the winning winners are actually, there's two sets of two Mets tickets, and the game's actually tomorrow night. So whoever wins them, you better figure that shit out, because it's tomorrow. Plus, we're going to have, uh, the, the Army gave us a little bag of some stuff that the tickets, we're going to put the tickets in, and so there's going to be two winners for that, two sets, two tickets. We're going to do that at the end. I'm not going to do it now because I have to give you, give you a reason to make you sit there and watch me fucking babble here. I'll help. I'm at the middle high school. Awesome. There you go. So she can help out because we're going to need it. I need, I need all kinds of help. Also, we just finished up. Uh, we're going to go next thing, Game Changer Program. We just finished up the, la- the last round of the Game Changer Program. The results were even fucking greater than I expected. You know, and I expect, I expect a lot and the results are more, better than I expected. And not only the physical results. The physical results I know is going to happen. You come to this gym, you semi-eat decent, you know, you're going to get physical results and it's guaranteed. It's impossible. But not only the physical results, but these people in this program completely change their, their lives. They change their mindset, their positivity, and their overall outlook on life. And that's the purpose of the program. This is the next level stuff. This is the stuff that's going to change. They're going to make them better in their careers. They're going to make them better in everything they do. They have their relationship with their family and their, their pet goat and all that other shit. You know, it has completely changed their lives. So we're starting the next round of the Game Changer program now. You know, after seeing these ridiculous results, a lot of people have been asking me, when is the next round coming up? We're actually doing the first meeting. We have several people signed up already. There's still a few spots available. We're doing the first meeting this uh, next weekend, Saturday the 29th. You know, the Game Changer is advanced nutrition, accountability, training, and most importantly, mindset program. It's in addition, on top of your, your regular boot camp, boxing, or personal training program here. So it's not a standalone program. You cannot just join the Game Changer program. This is the next level. This is the advanced group that's going in addition to your regular training. And it will completely change your life. And I, and I can fucking guarantee that. You know, I knew the, I knew the program was going to be insanely effective. But after seeing the physical and mental results of the people that just completed it, you know, even my expectations were exceeded. So... We already have some people registered. It's, again, there's still a few spots left. You can still get in there. I'm keeping the group pretty small. I've already had to turn down a ton of people because you do need to meet certain criteria to join this. You know, there are still a few spots, but I will turn you down. You have to have certain criteria to join it. You have to have been here for a certain amount of time. You have to have a certain level of, you know, knowledge about things, the way we do things here, because this is the next level. This is the advanced stuff. So the first meeting for that is on the 29th. For those of you that already joined, make sure that you've been added to the private Facebook group. It's called Operation Peak Physique, GC2. That's for Game Changer, number two. The group's already been created. I added most of you. I should have already added most of you. Let me know if you haven't been added to that yet. You know there's going to be tons of things going on in that group every single fucking day once we get started. We'll cover everything you need to know and details and at, the, at the first meeting and the first private workout that we're going to do. So if you want to get in on the Game Changer program, there's not much time left. Let me know. You can respond to this, leave a message, send an email, call me, freaking come in here, something. So the Game Changer program is the perfect setup for our, now our upcoming six-week weight loss body transformation challenge. Everyone is always asking, when is the next six-week challenge? When is the next six-week challenge? Because it is known all over there. This is like Rockland County's number one weight loss challenge. We're obviously the number one weight loss gym around here, but we, it's known all around Rockland County that this is the place to go 
for a weight loss challenge. Everyone knows about our six-week challenge. This is Rockland County's longest running and most successful weight loss program by far. You know, many of those fuckers out there try to copy our every move that we make. And, and that's expected as we're obviously we were voted America's top trainer in studio. But these fuckwads out there can never be us or do what we do at the levels we do it. It's fucking impossible to keep up. They're not going to keep up. All these little stooges around here try to do it. It's not going to happen. So copy away. Whatever. We'll just keep killing it and we'll keep changing lives. So right now we have a contest going on. You could win free entry into the six week challenge. The link, I'll put the link in the comments, whatever. It's all over Facebook. You can't miss it. All over the, I sent out emails today also. There's going to be two winners for that contest uh, to win entry, free entry into the six week challenge. One winner is going to be a member. One member is going to be a non-member. So yes, you can be a member and still join the weight loss challenge. And there's going to be a guaranteed member that wins it. So there's going to be one non-member winner randomly chosen and one winner that's randomly chosen. So you know, you can't win the fucking game if you don't play. So just enter in. All you do is enter your information in and you are automatically entered in to win free entry into the challenge. So no one knows the official start date yet. So I'm going to tell you the official start date. The official start date of the next six week weight loss body transformation challenge is going to be Monday, May 8th. I hope I got the date right. Monday, May 8th. And this challenge is for new members only. And of course, current members can join it, but you can't, you can't just, you know, it's new members only. So no, normally if you've already done like, a promotion or whatever, you know, people can't be popping from promotion to promotion. Anyway, whatever. Uh, we're going to go to some questions that some people sent in during the week for the show. So someone just asked me recently, what is it like for new members there? You know, I got a question. They said, and asked me, what's the workouts like? Because I'm a little nervous. I'm scared. And some of them are even like fucking horrified to come in here. I mean, look at me. My ugly ass is up here babbling, spazzing the fuck out and twitching and all this shit. Of course, of course, you know, can you blame them for being a little nervous and, and worried coming in here? You know, everyone that meets me always says, when I first met you, I thought you were such a dick. And you know what? Now that I've gotten to know you, I realize you really are a fucking dick. But I still want to thank you for always going out of your way for trying to help me and change my life. And you know what? Listen, if I need to be a fucking dick to get you guys results, I'll do that. I'll be that. I'll be that person. I'll do whatever it takes. I will be whatever I have to be to guarantee your success and your goals. And that's a promise. And I promise you, you will get them and I'll do whatever it takes. So new members, you don't need to be scared. You will be walking into probably the best environment, environment you possibly can in Rockland County. You'll be surrounded by friends and family immediately. Friends that you don't even know you have. You have these friends before you even come in. Bat shit fucking crazy. Look at that. Just a bunch of freaks comment on there. You'll be, you'll be walking in and have immediate friends the second you walk in. You will be surrounded by a well-trained army of peak freaks that have your back that are always willing to reach out for you and help you out no matter what, you know? Someone did it for them when they first fucking came here, and so now they're gonna be willing to do it for you. They're gonna wanna pay it forward to the new scared member who thinks they don't fit in and thinks they can't reach their goals or think that they don't even deserve the results that they're after, you know? That the person that's been self-sabotaging themselves for years, they're gonna walk in here and you're gonna have people immediately come and help you out and. And, and show you the way and lead you the same way someone led them the day they walked in. So here you'll be welcomed by our, by our amazing staff, the best fucking staff in Rockland County, the best staff in the world, and by our platoon of recruits and our members that were in your shoes one day. They know what it's like. They've been there, some of them recently, and they've already transformed like bam, 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 a couple weeks, and they're just dropping weight. They're like just now veterans now. They just have their shit together. You know, it's just like a, a cohesive unit here, one unit. So now they want to help you out from day one. So they want to make sure you don't rob yourself of that feeling they felt after being here a few months and they stepped on that fucking scale and they were shocked at how much weight they lost or how when people see them, they don't recognize them. They ask them if they're sick. They're like, oh my God, are you sick? Are you okay? Do you have fucking cancer or something? Nowadays, you can't, you can't lose weight you know, with hard work. People don't understand hard work. They think you're sick. You have cancer or something. Or you can't get, get build muscle because then you're on steroids. People don't even, nowadays, the generation doesn't understand fucking hard work. So... They don't want to rob you that moment of people thinking that you have some like deathly disease because you just lost so much weight and you look fucking awesome. And they're going to be haters too. Oh my God, you look so, you look too skinny. Yeah, fuck you. You know what? Like those people we were talking about before. I don't even remember what I was talking about. Anyway, the people who finally see themselves again and they look in the mirror, you know, and they feel like a superhuman, new and improved freak fucking version of themselves. They don't want to, they want to make sure you don't rob yourself of that, that person that they were when they walked in and now the way they felt when they stepped on that scale and now with the way they look in the mirror and they go through their family members they haven't seen for years. They don't want to rob you of those moments. So they were in your shoes. They remember it. They lived it. They've been there just recently 
And they don't want you to rob yourself of all those life-changing fucking moments that they had themselves since joining Peak Physique. So you're gonna have a team, a family, from the second you walk in this fucking door. So don't be afraid. Yes, I'm a fucking dick. Yes, I'm an asshole that everyone tells me every single day, but I do it all for all you. So to get you to where you need to be, where you fucking want to be, where you should be, where you deserve to fucking be. That's why I do what I need to do. So we're going to fly into a case study, a new one, uh, Steve Owen. He's only been here a couple of months, I think. And he is like, you would think that this guy has been here for 15 years and you would think the guys he's training with and the women he's training with and the freaks he's training with, you would think he's, they're like old high school buddies of his that he knew for like, whatever, 20 years. He met them a few weeks ago. He joined the six week challenge that we just had, which is what, like two months ago or something? I don't even know how long ago the last one was. But he's, it's like you would, you would think he knows these people for years. It's like his family here. It's like he belongs. He walks in. It's like that fucking show. What's that show? Everyone knows your name. Whatever. Cheers. Cheers. Fucking cheers. Who just yelled cheers? <laughs> anyway, so Steve Owen is like already a foundation in the, in the gym here. So I was, you know, talking to him. And he said he was just looking through his Facebook account one day and he, and he saw some pictures of some people he knew that he used to work with and he was just blown away by the results and he wanted the same thing for himself. You know, but that's the short answer. The more complex answer is he was just tired of being miserable and of how, about how out of shape he was and how he let himself get go and let him, the, the shape he let himself get into. He was using every excuse why he had, you know, bad health and this and that and his job and stress and injuries and health issues. He came up with every excuse in the world, you know, just to give up call it a life, call it a day, just throw in the towel on himself, you know, like those same pe new people we were just talking about walking in the door. That was you. That was, these, that was them. They're here to help you. So that was, that was Steve Owen. Can you come unlock the door? The door is locked. I don't want to scare away the civilians. But anyway, one second. Can you unlock the door? I have it locked. I try to keep the animal caged inside so that we don't scare away any of the, the civilians or anything. Anyway, he said his job, his stress, his health issues, you know, that was all just a crutch constantly leaning on to, to just throw blame on and make excuses for. You know, all he, all he had to do was look in the mirror for the answer why he had gotten so bad, and it was himself. He had no one to blame but himself for his circumstance. And these are his words. I'm just telling you about his story. I'm not saying this, but anyway. You know, he finally had enough of the excuses that with the fact that he was, you know, 30 pounds heavier than when he had his heart attack, you know, he was nothing but a ticking time bomb. And he wanted, he wanted to be around for his daughter and everything else. You always come early and then you always get a live version of this show, huh? I do. I think you come here on purpose, just for the freak show. <laughs> so he wants to be around for his daughter and everything that, that she has going on for her and her future. And medication? Yes, he was on medication. He's on Fucking blood pressure medication, blood thinners, cholesterol medication, all, everything, everything you could think of, you know, all, all that list goes on and on. You need toilet paper to list everything that he was, he was on or is on or was used to be on, you know, due to his heart attack that he had in, in April a couple years ago. So his doctor, he said his doctor always encouraged him to lose weight since then, but it, it just seemed like a case of going in one ear, out the other, like a lot of people out there. They just think they know it all. They think they could just do it themselves or it's not going to happen to them or whatever. So he would see the doctor every three months and he pretty much just ignored them. And what, it, what caused his initial weight gain was that he just worked a lot, he said, and, and you know, his job, a bunch of side jobs, was always, always settling for the quickest, easiest options when it came to food. You know, 99% of the time meant obviously fast fucking food, which is just crap, which you know is poison, is the devil. So putting it all out there over the last 10 years, he would say he averaged at least one fast food meal per day for 10 years straight, every day, and he's not exaggerating. With, take, put that together with some red, those sugary Red Bulls, you know, like they were going out of style and, not, and, and no exercise to put on top of that. So yeah, imagine how that heart attack came. And then he ended up signing up for the six week challenge just a couple of months ago. So other fitness programs he's tried before, he's tried multiple gyms, some that just closed down on him without even letting him know. Uh, he tried Planet Failure as he called it. And, you know, he, he said, what kind of gym offers fucking bagels and pizza and candy at the front desk of the members? And then he said, oh, yeah, a shit show gym. Or whatever, there's a shit show gym here, too, but we just don't give you bagels. We give you ass whoopings. And, you know, all the other gyms that he's been part of and diet programs he's tried, none of it's ever happened. None of it ever gave him the support and the accountability he got at peak. So, you know, like most people, when he's at those different gyms or whatever, he would go two to three months and slowly but surely he would just stop coming in. 
So the results he's had from peak since he started, I think he was in the January weight loss challenge. I started like January 16th, I think, something like that. Somewhere around January 16th. He's lost 34 pounds. He's lost over 6% of his body fat. And that's all in just a little less than three months. So no way, he said, no way in hell I would have done that anywhere else without all, the, all you guys in the gym pushing me. He's been trained, he tries to make it here about five times a week, depending on his kid's schedule. And he said, if he can't, whenever he comes across someone that's in a similar situation to he was back then, like right after he had his heart attack and the doctors basically told him he's going to die, he'll tell him to stop making excuses, give the class a shot, and once you do, you'll never look back. Like, like you've said before, you know, if you're in a situation like, like him and you, cannot aff- you can't afford to not give it a shot, you can't afford it. It'll cost you more in doctor's bills and prescriptions and, and fucking funerals than it will for a gym membership. So the trainers are... are Top to bottom, they're top notch. They have the best interests in mind. The system is proven to work. And the members, a lot of whom are the same boat as me, truly become a second family. It has been a long time since I felt this good about myself. And the feeling is addictive and I want more and I will accomplish what I set out to do back in January. No excuses. And those are t- the Steve Owens' own words there. What are you guys whispering out over there? You whispering about me? You know, you feel free. Whatever you feel like you associate yourself with, that's, that's free. That's the way it goes nowadays, right? Anyway, doesn't take much to sidetrack me. I don't even know what the fuck I was talking about. Steve Owen. Oh, Steve Owen is looking. Steve Owen is out there. Yes, Steve Owen. We're going to continue telling your life story into the world. I hope you don't mind. Anyway, he said his favorite thing about Peak, aside from the results that he's achieved, his favorite thing about Peak Physique are the connections with the people he's made. You know, there's so many members. He said, I couldn't ask for a better bunch of guys. We're, we're part of the ever-growing wolf pack, they call themselves. Bunch of freaks in the middle of the morning. The wolf pack. So, so many people that he can truly say have his back through this life-changing journey. And while he has their back just the same, he's made such good friends in such a short amount of time. He's only been here three, less than three months He's lost all that weight. He already has changed his life. He's in the, probably the best shape of his life, healthier than he's been in, in decades in three fucking months. So he said it's truly what he, was, what he was lacking from all the other gyms he's ever been part of, and that's what sets P Physique apart from all the other wannabes. Those are his words. And he, he said how his life has changed like crazy since he's got the, these results and since he started in mid-January. He has tons of more energy. He feels less self-conscious about himself, just an overall feeling of pride and accomplishment. You know, he's still ne- always never, never going to peak. He's always going to want to get better and better and better, you know, and for the millionth time, he has an amazing peak family to thank for all that happening. You know, thanks to, he said, thanks for giving him the opportunity to, to, for me to tell his story. And he's hoping that if he could just help one person, you know, to influence to, you know, after hearing his story, if he could help someone down the road, because he knows for sure it helped him. So we got to do a raffle winner of our tickets. One second, I got to go find the tickets. One second, don't go anywhere. All right, so we're back. We got these tickets. I got to break some of them up. Some of them are still attached. We're going to pull two tickets out. There's two sets of Mets tickets. That's for tomorrow, so. I got to rip these apart. Some of them are still in a long line. And we have... Some, there's going to be some Herbalife supplements in there. There's some donation, a bag from the United States Army. That's going to be in there. I'm just breaking these up because some of them are still stringed together like this. So I need to break it up. There are tickets for tomorrow night's game or a day game. I don't even know when it is. Tomorrow, I know that. So if you win these tickets, you better get sick now and call them sick to work. One second. just want to rip them all so we can mix these things up. Gonna be two winners, two sets, of, two sets of two tickets. So every hour that you were here for the 24-hour workout, you were, should have gotten a ticket. We throw your ticket in here. So the more hours you were here, obviously the more times your your, car, your t- 
tickets are thrown into this bin. So there's a chance you could win all four tickets if you get pulled out twice because some of you were here for so many hours, your name's gonna be in here a lot. Just wanna make sure I broke up all of them and none of them are attached so they don't stick out like these two. All right, we're gonna shuffle this up and pull out. Here is the first, the first ticket. If you can see the number, it's backwards because Facebook puts their fucking videos backwards for some reason. Five, five, two, seven, three, one. Obviously I'll post these later. Five, five, two, seven, three, one. Hey, you, come here. Why don't you come pull a second ticket for me? Yes, these, these tickets were donated by someone so you might as well come and pull the tickets. Do you know where these ticket tickets came from? Pull the second ticket. You pulled two tickets. What the? <laughs> what the fuck? I don't want to be on the camera. It's too late. You're you're on the camera saying I don't want to be on the camera. Why don't you want to be on the camera? We just don't. I don't like camera. To be in the kitchen watching live. What a loser! <laughs> so you come here a half hour early, and you're in the gym, but you're watching in your phone in a room right next to you watching live. Do I fucking smell? I do. I just finished working out, so I probably do fucking smell, but Jesus, that's just crazy. The second ticket is right here. I just gave you a thumbs up. Thanks. Do one in real life. She gave a thumbs up in real life and on the fucking computer screen. Thumbs up. Freaking losers. People are in their phones all day. All you see at like a restaurant or wherever at a, at a bar is like 15 people sitting around a fucking table stuffing their faces with some nasty food all clicking in their phones, probably texting each other in the same table instead of just talking. You're allowed to speak. Even though I don't like speaking and I hate people, but still, you guys are allowed to. So the second ticket, I haven't read it off, I don't even know. All right, they're separate numbers, so hopefully it won't be the same person. So the first ticket was 552731. The second ticket is 552634. There's our two winning tickets. The game is tomorrow night. There are two sets of two Mets tickets. There's some Herbalife supplements in there and some stuff from the army. So check those tickets, I'll post them on if you have the winning ticket. Any questions? If there's any questions, you can post them in there. I'll put the links, whatever I was talking about. I don't even remember what I was talking about. Yes, it's a tuna box. We do our raffles out of a fucking tuna box. Right there. So whoever these tickets are, claim them, claim them. Because if these don't get claimed by like a couple hours or whatever, I need to go do it again. I need to pull out some other ones because this game is tomorrow, I think. I don't know if it's a day game or a night game. Any questions on there? I don't know. If there's any questions, leave them in there. Got to go. We got to get stuff for this class. About to start in 15 minutes. Get your asses here. And see you later.